Hi, everybody. Welcome to This Art Life. Hi, Writing Art Project is an organization that was created by Onika Russell. Uh, it's just an artist-led initiative that tries to support art in the Caribbean region and um, through exhibitions, through workshops, through talks and films. So look out on um, YouTube for videos on art, um, art in the Caribbean by Tide Rising Art Projects. And don't forget to subscribe um, to the YouTube channel. Today we're talking about how art is made with two artists, Onika Russell and Sharon Norwood. Um, both have Caribbean um, background. Sharon Norwood is an artist who does painting, installation, and ceramic. And we're going to talk um, with her about her process today. And um, Onika Russell is also pa a painter um, as well as an, a digital artist. And so we'll talk. We'll we'll be having a conversation with both of these artists about their their process of creation. To start with, um, Sharon. Hello, hello, <laughs> Ty. Rising. My name is Sharon. Presentation and the chance to talk about my work. Um, what 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 would you like to know about my practice or my process? Well, um, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about your um, a work that's in progress right now. Um, if you have um, any in your studio that you can um, talk about, that would be that would be good. Otherwise, we can just we can also just talk about um, what you're working on. <laughs> okay. Well, um, sure, we can do that. I mean, in my practice, I'm always working on like so many things and so um definitely have like a range of things happening in my studio from ceramic creating some ceramic forms um that are in varied stage of production some are in this forms others are um you know post bisque um, glazed and ready for some of my decorative kind of um marks and while others are actually greenware and then also of course i've got some drawings that I've been working on and I think um, like the drawings that I've been working on um, right now it feels like um, these are like the most top of mind right now this piece that I'm working on is it's something I think I started in undergrad in undergraduate school and so um, and it's, it's supposed to be this very um, large drawing and I was kind of stuck I think uh, on it for a while, or maybe it just wasn't very interested. And then lately, uh, I began these smaller work, these smaller drawings. I think I showed this to you, Katrina, last time. Yeah. And so after I created this piece, I just felt like it needed to be like bigger. So I I started re revisiting this um, this large drawing, which I think it's probably about maybe 16 feet by two feet. So it's in like a scroll format. <laughs> so I'm like slowly like rolling it, unrolling it and, um, and, and, and um, kind of like um, making it. And it's like definitely like a, um, a working process in process where, you know, each, each mark informs the next mark. And I think last night I made some like marks on it and I was like, Ooh, I've got a problem now. I'm going to have to solve this kind of thing. But I think that's like, um, a, a neat thing about my process, it's like, and I guess about every artist's process, that sometimes, you know, when you're working on a piece, whether it's a painting or a sculpture, you know, you make certain decisions, and then maybe those decisions may um, kind of be like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> and then, then you have to go back in and kind of try sort of work your way back out of it. So that's kind of where I am, um, in particular with this piece. But um, I'm definitely excited about, about it. and. Um, I'm, you know, this is probably going to be what's on my plate for a little while. So, um, can you talk talk us through the process? Um, how did you begin? Well, Where did the idea come from for this work? If, is there an idea that you start with, or you start with marking? Um, so, I, it's interesting because I feel like I'm in like, you know, since undergrad and graduate school, I've created this visual vocabulary, and I I think of it. Um, in terms of, um, you know, all the things that I'm interested in is in this bag of stuff. And so 
um, over time, I, you know, I, I kind of play with these, these, these ideas and themes. And so um, definitely one of the things that comes up a lot in my work is uh, mark making and gestures and repetition and stuff. So I'm working within that, that language. So um, when I, um, like with this piece, I was inspired in terms of, you know, like I've always thought of having these marks kind of like overtake things, you know, um, becoming these marks sort of being in a space where, um, you know, it's almost like, you know, same kind of metaphor where I'm always putting myself into these spaces. So having, being able to make a drawing that this huge with these marks is really exciting. And it goes back to like um, the conversation that I have in all my other works. So I don't think that um, necessarily I'm like think, sitting and thinking, okay, I'm going to make a particular work about a certain thing. Um, but when I start making the work, um, all the ideas and things that I'm interested in end up coming into the work. Is that so? What are those ideas? What's the con the conversation that you're having in the work? Um, I think in this work, in this particular work, I'm definitely playing with like mark making, like the idea of using the black curl or the curly line that represents self in this sort of like ornate space where that is, it starts looking like the landscape. Or in these ones, particularly when I started doing landscape, you know, some of the thoughts I think about is water, perhaps, right? And then I think about, you know. Um, maybe while I'm making, I'm thinking about the Atlantic slave trade and what that might be like. So those are kind of ideas that I work with loosely, mm -hmm. you know, but is there, you know, I feel like they're, um, things that are always like present and I'm constantly like brushing up against, but it's not something that I want to articulate in a very sort of specific way. Right. right. So that's kind of like where these are. So that's what I'm thinking about. And of course, you know, I think about, you know, I've been doing the fine China things and the Delftware and, you know, there's like a lot of like historical um, connections and a lot of sort of um, the way that these things sort of affect black bodies or the way black bodies encounter these spaces. Um, so these things are constantly coming up, but they're not like um, a specific conversation that I'm referencing. It's more like, um, these conceptual ideas and these um, yeah. visual imagery that I continue to sort of like work with. Mm -hmm. So, but the starting point is you mentioned the black, the black curl. And could you talk a little bit about where, what that black curl is and okay. why you began with that curl? Yeah. So I think for me, um, the, the black curl, the curl um, was something that I, that allowed me, cause I used to do figurative work and, and it was just so specific. And I wanted um, to do something that was less specific, specific, like less specific in terms of one person and, and more like um, an over overreaching kind of specific in terms of like uh, more of a community. And I, I, I thought that for me, like the Black Pearl was like so, such a nice discovery because then it started, I mean, it started, I started thinking about, okay, you know, what do we all have in common as, as, as black folks? You know, our hair is, you know, pretty much all curly as far as I know, right? So then that became like the simple way to sort of like um, talk about black, think about black bodies and, and race and difference without um, being so specific to one person. It became like this sort of general thing. But that's kind of like my, my thing about the black curl and then of course you know for me it also speaks to art you know and art history and drawing and so it becomes a way for me to live in a, in a political space and also a non-political space at the same time mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of like my 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 kind of like enamor with with the curly line because it can be you know it's about gesture and, and there's just so much like the more i work with it the more i learn about you know using this very simple language in my work so right now we see these are just patterning and it's like you know it's about patterning and the curl you know and the curl being patterning and, and that kind of stuff so you know i'm still thinking about um the line and the curl and black bodies but at the same time you know i, I get a chance to to think about, you know, mark making and uh, and uh, some of those building blocks of you know of being an artist and and how the line is so important and stuff like that, you know, and the unique gesture and my unique mark making. So all of that sort of like becomes like a nice space that's like really kind of I find it kind of full, so I can mm -hmm. still get in there and, and and really make work. 
I'm very interested in um, the fact that Sharon draws mm -hmm. and also ends up sometimes with an object or a set of objects. Yes. And, you know, it's very, it's a process or a way of working that I um, find very fascinating, like as an artist, how you start with a drawing and then take it towards an object. Like what's the decision that brings you to that point, Sharon? So um, I think it's interesting. I think um, in sort of like referencing, thinking about that, I think my work initially it started as me thinking about still life. And I think um, just like, because I was doing like so much stuff, there was so much preparation, especially with ceramic, there's so much preparation in such a process. Um, I think um, initially it began, and I'm, I hope I'm answering your question in this. So initially, I th it went into, it was a matter of, okay, let's just get rid of all that stuff and like just start drawing. And, and for me, I think at the time I was thinking self-portrait, let me curate my space to, into something that represents um, self-portrait. And when I shower, I don't know if you're like me, but I don't really like to put comb in my hair. So it means that my hair clumps a lot. <laughs> and so when I'm like having like wash day, it's like it starts to come out. Um, and I really love that. I know it's really horrible. My husband would be real close that way. But it comes out and it's like all this clumps of hair and I'm always like real fascinated by it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna leave it there. It's gonna dry and then I'm gonna make the sculpture. I'm gonna, you know, and so for me, what the, the hair was like, it just was a really neat way for me to connect with self. And so um, when I start, when I draw, when I draw that insign insignificant thing, it becomes like almost this like really interesting way to make the insignificant significant. And there's this whole like, you know, whoa, thing that opens up and <laughs> feel really inspired. But also that also for me also speaks about the gesture, right? So like, you know, now I've started these like ceramic cups where I'm like pinching and stuff like that, right? And I still have my marks there because, you know, I think the marks are kind of important. There's, I still get excited about it, but it, it speaks in the same language to me as these like very touched marks, um, these very pinched marks on the surface, because you know, these pinch marks are unique to, to me, but it's not just unique to me. If anybody pinched something, you'd also see their, their, their mark index in the same way. Yeah. So, so I'm always making like these connections between the, uh, that, that, those two kinds of abstraction, which I think kind of lives in, in, in a, overall conceptual thing about identity and and self and um you know our unique selves and you know and our unique bodies and stuff like that so so even when i'm making my marks like drawing to me it's the same language of these unique gestures and these unique marks and these um that's 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 specific and non-specific at the same time that's cool i mean i love that you made um kind of large teacup that I, I actually thought this was something you bought and <laughs> <laughs> this is a work in progress this is actually, it's funny because this is actually still in progress so it's like I'm not really quite and it's funny because I, I have all this work that's always like that you know it's like okay I have to leave this alone now because it's beginning to get on my nerve and so I set it down and then maybe in about a month I'll come in and I'll look at it again I'll say okay I know what I need to take this across the finish line <laughs> yeah. and then I'll be done but that's kind of like how I, how I like to work. But you also have um, started with a finished object because I've seen some of the ceramics. That some of my found you... objects. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. So and I do and I and I work do work with found objects. I mean, my, some of my found objects are like, yeah, okay. The found object, and they become like they become more like canvases, I suppose. You know where um, I. I locate, I find these objects, and then I start to sort of um, um, apply my marks, my original marks, and, and they become like a drawing to me because I'm trying to see how our painting, you know, how do I, how can I make this object better, or how can I change this object with the marks um, in terms of making these objects, like enhancing it in some ways. I think that's how I began thinking about it.